Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is A Weapons. It's Midlife Music. Um, shout outs to the entire LDBC. Um, go to ldbcsports.com, register, make a profile, interact with the brothers and the sisters of the LDBC. Also, go to shopfightfan.com if you want that LDBC merch. And visit my second home, TicketTVMedia.com. And you can pick up A Weapons merch. You can pick up Midlife Music merch. You know, shirt's a little dusty. <laughs> Midlife Music merch. You can also pick up Ticket TV merch as well. Um, the site is down right now, you know, because of the pandemic and everything. But it'll be up soon. And as soon as it comes back up, we'll have new music and new merch for you. And I also have to finish up a lot of the songs that I've got, you know, like I'm going to actually have a series of like, um, like an intro, verse, transition, chorus. And I'm going to do that till I'm going to actually make songs for like, you know, old R&B songs and whatnot. And I'm redoing the music and everything. So be on the lookout for that. Also be on the lookout for Urban Renewal ENT. And that stands for Urban Renewal Enterprises, not entertainment, enterprises. And that will be dealing with everything that I've done from, I'd say 1990, maybe even 89, but 90, definitely, all the way up to 2017. And 2017 is when I changed everything over from Urban Renewal to Midlife Music. So be on the lookout for that. And lastly, um, I'm actually going to make a label for, for young artists because midlife music is for older artists, but I will actually make a label for young artists and that'll be called P4P entertainment. In other words, pound for pound. And that will be LDBC affiliated. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to run it because I'm a little too biased. So I'm gonna let somebody young run P4P entertainment and I will be running urban renewal, urban renewal, is my project I've had since 1993. So that will be ran by me. And then Midlife Music is LDBC A Weapons. You know what I'm saying? We, con in conjunction with each other, we run Midlife Music. So that's for the business end. Is that all business? Oh, no. All right. And make sure that you look out for my pony campaign. These are the low top joints. You know what I'm saying? They hot, but like I said, I don't like the bottoms on them. I don't like these bottoms. I want them changed. So I'm going to take another sneaker and put it on the top of that. You know, once I get this, get the sole and the upper removed, once I get the sole and the upper, you know what I'm saying, separated, I'll take the other sneaker and then put it on top. Now, these are the low top ones. Like I said, I love these uppers. They are ridiculously comfortable. I, I don't know what they were doing, but these are comfortable. But I just don't like this part of it. It looks like a skateboard sneaker. So I want to take this off. And then put a basketball sole underneath here. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm just going to rebrand it and resell it. So th these are the low top ones. And these are the high top ones. Like I said, you know, it's hot. But I just don't like this bottom. So I'm going to remove this bottom, separate it, and put the basketball one on there. And that way, because the basketball ones, they're not comfortable at all. They're not comfortable at all. So I'm just going to take this upper take the basketball sole only and put it on and discard the upper from the basketball one. So be on the lookout for that campaign. That campaign is, I'm, I'm only asking five bucks from everybody. So you know what I'm saying? When you get time, just put in that five bucks so I can get it done. And look, I need a cut badly. Rona has got me in the house. I need a cut badly. You know, hopefully I can get one by next week. All right. On to the subject matter of this video. Um, the name of this video is the David Spurrier Files, part one, because it's going to be a five part series. And I've told the, the fake music observer, who's actually the real Steve Perry dick sucking participant. He's not an observer anymore. He's an actual participant in giving Steve Perry all kinds of hand jobs and blow jobs. Because you're nothing but a faggot, Mr. Spurrier. And I'll tell you in your fucking face. So anyway, and I'm even going to, I'm going to finish it off with a song that I was working on. <laughs> I'm going to finish you off with a song that I was working on. I'm going to finish off this video with that. All right. Um, 
basically, and I'll just go over it again. I went over it like two or three years ago. And I imagine by now that Mr. Spurrier probably has me blocked, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to put this out. I'm going to put it on my Midlife Music channel so that anybody who's watching it can just basically go to the video and say, damn, you know what? I didn't even know that Dave was a racist. Yes, he is, y'all. He is definitely, no doubt, unequivocally and unquestionably a racist. Now, our first conversation, and like I said, this is going to be broken up into five parts. Like the video is going to be five parts. I don't want it to be too long on, on certain parts. Um, I ran across this video, and at that time, he had less than 500 subscribers. And he was also unemployed. But I like the content. I still like some of the content that he's doing now. Right now, basically, what he's basically doing is giving Steve Perry blowjobs and begging him to come in his mouth. That's what he's doing now. But at the time, he was doing some real good videos, you know, on music and everything like that. So, you know, and it was um, 80s melodic rock. So I really, really gravitated to his channel. So, you know, I, you know, so I saw, so I'm on Facebook and um, I spoke to him, you know, chatted with him rather. And the first thing that, you know, he was doing was basically, you know, saying, well, okay, well, what are you doing coming to my channel? What are you doing coming to my channel? And I'm like, well, I embrace all, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not, you know, th these are not his direct words, but I do have his direct words. I do have them. So I'm like, well, you know, I love your channel. I love what you're doing. And I think that with the right promotion, your channel can really go somewhere. Because there are a lot of people who are into melodic rock, into the 80s rock. A lot of people. And so then, you know, it was like, well, you know, um, well, don't you like black music? And excuse the noise, y'all. That's the um, the radiator. I said, well, don't you like black music and things like I said, yes, well, I love black music, but I also love white music, too. You know, and Mrs. Spurrier, FYI, all American Music comes from the blues. All American music comes from the blues. And you know where the blues came from, Mr. Spurrier? The blues came from black people working on the cotton fields, in the tobacco fields, in the corn fields, in the peanut fields, in the cucumber fields. You know what I'm saying? In the apple orchards. This is before the Mexican brothers came over here. We were doing the work. So... With all of that, we would sing songs. And white people made it into what they wanted to make it into from there. But always remember, any and all forms of American-made music, country western, folk, um, hill, um, hillbilly music, um, bluegrass, bluegrass music, pop music, it all comes from the blues which means it all comes from black people. Okay, back to the story. So it's like, well, you know, I, I, don't you like Otis Redding? And don't you? I said, well, yeah, but I like Crystal Gale too. I like Loretta Lynn. I like Kenny Rogers and rest in peace to Kenny Rogers. I like Elvis Presley's old stuff. I liked a lot of white people music. Why can't I why can't I like white people music? Why? Why? And Mr. Spurry, let me give you a little bit of my history. For seven years, maybe even eight years, because you know, I was born in Brooklyn, then we moved to the Bronx and my other brother was born. Then we moved to North Carolina, and that's when my baby brother was born. We spent seven, six, seven, maybe eight years down there. And all we listened to was country western music. That's all that's all we listened to. TV shows. You know, like sometimes they would have solid gold on, but most of the time it was Donna Fargo, who you didn't know existed, you dummy. Baba Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters. Hee haw. That's what we listened to. And that's what we saw. So I'm very very well versed when it comes to country western music 
Very. So, then it was, then I told him, I said, well, Dave, listen, why don't we get together? You know what I'm saying? Since I do love your channel, um, since I feel that if we got together, we could actually cross promote each other because I could see with I could see that your channel is going to flourish because of, you know, the fan base that you're reaching out to. Then it's, well, you know, um, I'm between jobs. OK, let me help you because I'm not between jobs. So let me help you. Well, I, I don't have any money. Motherfucker, did you hear what the fuck I told you? I said to let me help you. So time went by. Then this dude started talking about Don Felder of how he's right about a contract and everything like that. And I'm like, well, Dave, I disagree with that. Don Felder needs to just shut the fuck up because he's stupid. If you came in, right? Okay. We'll give it to you. You were you had one, one hit record for the Eagles. One. You had a minor hit with the other one with um, Victim of Love. That was a minor hit, but the major hit that you did was Hotel California. That song was a hit, and no one's gonna deny that. But that doesn't make you call shots, and you definitely shouldn't be asking for equal money than Don Felder and God bless the dead Glenn Fry. You can't do that. You need to just shut the fuck up and just do your guitar playing, do some writing and some production and background vocals. That's what you need to do. Shut the fuck up. So for a while, David Spurrier ran off, didn't want to talk, didn't want to do nothing. Okay. So then I guess he got over his hissy fit, his, his conniption and decided that he wanted to talk now. So we started talking again. Then he started asking... Well, why don't um these these promoters and stuff hire these cover bands? I'm like, well, Dave, nobody want to fucking see that. Like, for example, um Hugo Valenti, he was on um, part of this group called I think it was either Infinity or Frontiers. It was one of those groups. No, no, it was Infinity. And they would cover Journey songs. And Hugo looks like Steve Perry. He looks like him. But the problem is, is that he just doesn't have Steve Perry's power. But he does sound a lot like him. He killed the Mother Father song. He killed it. But he just doesn't sound... He doesn't have Steve Perry's chest voice. We'll put it that way. He has Steve Perry's throat voice, but not the chest voice. And so, um... He starts... Dave Perry starts going on a tirade about how I'm out of the fucking loop. And I don't know anything. And all this, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Nobody is going to hire a cover band. Not no corporate sponsor because, okay, for example, with Kiss, right? You got Paul Stanley, you got Gene Simmons, and you got two of the new cats. You got, um, well, not new, new, but, you know, new compared to the the classic um group. Because Ace Fraley and Peter Chris, they, were, they weren't in the group. So you got, um, you had Bruce Kulick. And you had Eric Carr, God bless his dad. He passed away. So the group they have now is Eric Singer on drums and vocals because he has a he he can sing his ass off. So you got you got that, and then you got on um, Tommy Thayer. All right, and I bet you didn't know who Tommy Thayer is, do you, Mr. Spurrier? You dick sucking faggot. Anyways, they have those groups. So that's the group they have now. Do you think? For a second that anybody is going to pay to see any group that does not have Paul Stanley or Ann Gene Simmons in it? No. So why would you spend the money? So I explained that to him amicably and respectfully. And this dude just went on a tirade. You don't know anything about music. Da da da. I'm like, motherfucker, you mm, mm, mm. If he only knew what I knew about music, he would shut the fuck up. But anyways, I said, listen, that was uncalled for what you did. But now he did give a backhand apology after the rant. 
you know, I, I apologize for the rant, but I just get frustrated. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? So anyways, after that, I said, listen, that was uncalled for. I'm going to give you two days to hit me back and apologize for that because that was wrong. And that was not at all related to what I answered to in the video. You got to stop being a fucking baby. So he decided not to write back. So I said, okay, it's time to hit him hard. So I wrote a letter, an email, whatever. And I said, listen, there are two things that white people will kill you for. Money and if you come at their daughters. I'm not going to come at your daughter or your family because I'm too respectful for that. So I'm going to hit you where it hurts. So I proceeded to tell him everything that he did wrong and everything he said wrong. So he took that whole letter and combined, and, and combined it all to me being disrespectful to his daughter. He took the whole thing and just took that little piece, the word daughter, not even in context now, the word daughter. Called me all kinds of assholes. And the only thing he did not call me was a nigger. And I'm shocked. So after that, I told him, David Spurrier, you are a racist. And I told him why he was a racist. So once that happened, he says, "Um, oh shit, holy shit. I'm not dissing him. Yes, you are. So, and, and by the way, I'm the one who told Mr. Spurry about Patreon because he had no idea what it was. So when he finally joined in, and of course, white people never give black people credit for shit. So once I did that, um, and, and I said what I had to say to him and he said what he had to say back, I went over to Patreon and I brought five other people and we all, you know, canceled our membership. So then he writes me and tells me, well, yeah, you can take your homeboys. You can take your homeboys with you and your friends and everything like that. I don't need your damn money. So in summary, Mr. Spurrier is nothing but a sea-sucking, Steve Perry, asshole, toss salad licking faggot. Now I'm going to end this song off with a joint that I did on it for Easy E beat, but it applies to you, Mr. Spurrier. <laughs> you ready? <clears throat> A weapon spit that neo blue style nigga. Reporting live from the Bronx, your wife's a hoe, so don't smile, nigga. Mm. <laughs> she said she'd rather fuck an RAP type, but then she settled for the R and B type, the five eleven two twenty hardcore LDBC type. And what if I told you that the homie started banging her? It was like a trap house selling crack the way the whole crew was slanging her. But you always claiming her. And you wouldn't believe. And she wasn't a tease. How that bitch took off her panties with ease, ease. Now she'll do the fuck what we say. A weapon spit that neo B L U E Z way. You faggot. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Fuck you, Dave Spurrier, you fucking Steve Perry dick-sucking faggot. Peace.